Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, this is a new month. We are in the month of April. April is the first, fourth month in 2023. Wow, praise God. Now, has God been faithful to you? He has. He has. Someone say, hmm, I, I can't see God's faithfulness. Hey, it's a constant with God to be faithful. The fact that one doesn't see it doesn't mean he is not faithful. Most times it's about where have you been looking? Praise God. But hey, I've got good news for you. As long as the word of God is coming to you, then God is demonstrating his love and his faithfulness to you. So why don't you take advantage of today and say, you know what? I'm going to take advantage of the word of God that I'm hearing right now. Put it to work and then see the demonstration of God's faithfulness in your life. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? And that's an instruction the Lord gave to us on this broadcast that every time we come up, we must demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me right now in faith as we declare, say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, the Lord has said that this month of April, I am revisiting the Abrahamic blessing. I am revisiting the Abrahamic blessing. Now, if, if you know the ways of God, if you know the thoughts of how God communicates, you will take this very, very seriously. Why? Because God is about to open something that is ancient, something that, that, that has been his heart for many years. And why does that concern you? Those are the things we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be teaching of uh, every day as long as the Lord will allow us to teach these things so that your mind will be in sync with what God is doing. And then you will begin to see the manifestation of what God has said. Or rather, you see the manifestation of the blessings of Abraham in your life. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, 13 and 14. Now watch this. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Having become a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now look at verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now take note of this. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He was made a cause for us. Now, take away everything written in bracket there. It's going to read like this. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, having become a cause for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. The intention of Christ redeeming us from the cause of the law is for this purpose that the blessing of Abraham might come on us. Now, why did he use the might there? It's not that he's going to decide who is going to give and who is not going to know. It's about who's going to receive and who's not going to receive it. So he used the word might. See that now. So it is not something that is forced on you. But it's something that is made available to everybody. 
See, now he redeemed everyone from the cost of the law. Every Gentile. Now, because now you have the Jews, you have the Gentiles. Now, Jews are the ones that God, you know, from scriptures, Jews were the ones that God selected. And then the Gentiles was every other person. But here he's telling us that God's intention was not only the Jews. He started with the Jews. But his intention is everybody. So now he had blessed the Jews with the Abrahamic blessing. Then when he did that, the fact that he selected one group, it means every other group stands condemned. But then here he tells us Christ now has redeemed us from the cause of the law. See, What's the cost of the law? This is the cost of the law. The law was given to the Jews. And because the law was given to the Jews, they were to keep the law. And the law was given to them because they, God took them out as a special people. And because of that law, every other person generally was condemned. Now, that condemnation itself became a cause. So, here is the point now. Christ came and he divided, you see, that wall of partition that existed between the Jews and the Gentiles, he divided it. You read in scriptures that when Jesus died, the, the, the robe, the, the, the temple, the 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 cloth that covered the Holy of Holies divided from top to bottom. Now, men could see what's, what's, what's hidden behind that, 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 that whole covering in the Holy of Holies. There was no more secret there. But he did that to clearly take out, you see, that was significant because he was bringing down that wall of partition, the scripture says. He wanted everybody to be one. So to do that, he had to take away that curse that existed. That curse came about when he gave the law to the Jews. So you find God say, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which are on the Egyptians. Now you see, he, he brought about his separation by choosing them. So okay, it's okay for the, the other fellows to suffer, but then you, you will have none of it. So there was a partition. Are you hearing me? Then, now he removed that partitioning. For him to remove that partitioning, not because now he is exposing his people to the trouble. No, rather he has done something that can bring in the outsiders in to the same blessing that his children enjoy. You see that now? So he now redeemed us from the cause of the law. So he looked at that cause that existed in the boundaries of the law and he took it out. How did he take it out? Christ died. He hung on a tree for us. And guess where he hung on the tree? Outside the Jewish, um, their territory. Do you understand? They took him outside Golgotha and nailed him up there on the cross. So as though he was pushed out to die in our place. That act in itself stood before God as the redemption of every Gentile that existed. And now what does that mean? It means from that day, there is no more demarcation between the Jews and the Gentiles. Also, that meant that from henceforth, everyone can enjoy that which God promised to Abraham. So he says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law that the blessing of, of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. So then, 
If this was the intention of God, the question you ask now, has Christ died? Of course, you know the answer is yes. That's why we celebrate Easter. And that's what we're celebrating this week. Praise God. This weekend, we're celebrating Good Friday and then Easter Sunday. Hey, think about it. That's proof before the whole world that Jesus died and then he rose again. But the fact that he died being hung on a tree meant that or means that he actually have redeemed us from the cause of every law that existed, putting us against God. He has done that already. So Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Now, having redeemed us from the cause of the law, the intent of God was that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. That is you and I. We were Gentiles. Praise God. So if this was his intention, and then Christ have died. What does that leave us? It means today the blessing of Abraham is ours. If the blessing of Abraham now belongs to us, have you received it? It's one thing for something to be given to you. It's another thing for you to receive it. So the question now is, have you received the blessing of Abraham. Now, what is the blessing of Abraham? That's another thing you need to start thinking about. What then is the blessing of Abraham? If Christ have redeemed us from the cause of the law, he was made a cause for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come on us. So where is the blessing of Abraham? What is the blessing of Abraham? Brothers and sisters, this is what we're gonna be talking about. And I'm telling you the truth, get ready for a transformation in your life. Get ready for your days of struggling are over. It's over, they are over. No more struggling for you. If you understand these things we're gonna be talking about from today, hey, then get ready for a mind shift Get ready for a situational change. Get ready for a complete turnaround in your life. Praise God. Think about it. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. And the intention is that the blessing of Abraham will come upon us. And he's done it. Will God be dragging his own path? No, God will not drag his own path. He is a just God. He loves justice. Oh, he loves justice. You remember he told Jeremiah, he says, let him who glories, glory in this, that he knows and understand me, that I am the God who loves to exercise loving kindness, justice. See, that's one of the things he loves to exercise, meaning God loves to do justice. Some translation says judgment. Judgment and justice is the same thing. You need judgment to establish justice. Praise God. After judgment is given, you now say justice has been served. When the right judgment is given, you say justice has been served. So God loves to exercise justice. Now Christ has died. Why would he be delaying? in getting across to us the blessing of Abraham. Now that's to tell you that he is not the one delaying it. He didn't delay it from day one, praise God. Now because he did not delay it, the other question then to ask is, who haven't received it yet? If God have given to it, if it is possible for the blessing of Abraham to come upon you, right? And God is not withholding it from you. Then the other thing is, why are you withholding the blessing of Abraham? Why are you withholding yourself from receiving the blessing of Abraham? It is not God. It is not Christ. Then who is it? It's you. It's you. 
So what is the blessing of Abraham? Tomorrow we're going to start looking at the, the blessing of Abraham, praise God. And we're going to look, examine it closely. Because God says, I'm revisiting the blessing of Abraham. If he's revis revisiting the blessing of Abraham, then we've got to follow him in this matter. I don't know about you. Now, I, I know, I have known the blessing of Abraham and I've been enjoying it. But when God says I'm revisiting it, revisiting it again, then I'm looking closely again. I'm sure there's something I must have been missing. I'm sure there is an understanding I need to upgrade to. I'm sure there are lots of things that I'm going to see now that he says I am revisiting it. And for every child of God, no matter where you are, and you're listening to me right now, God is saying this to you also. I am revisiting the blessing of Abraham. I don't know what you think. I don't know how you've been enjoying the blessing of Abraham. But hey, something's got to change right now. You need to start walking in confidence that the blessing of Abraham is yours. It's not just yours on paper. It's yours in reality. And God wants you to enjoy every one of it. And for you to enjoy it, then you've got to be in line. You've got to walk in line with God's thoughts and decisions that he has made. Your days of struggling are over. Your days of struggling, they are all over in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to find out all the things that are your benefits that you have not been enjoying. And I bet you, beginning from this month, it will talk to some of you, it will go to a higher level. To some of you, you will begin to enjoy because you will be exposed to a lot of truths. And this exposure is for you to benefit from it. Praise God. Can we just pray now? Father, we thank you for your word. Just like you have said, Lord, that you are revisiting the blessing of Abraham. Lord, we make ourselves ready. Father, in ways we have been missing your heart, your thoughts. Lord, in this season, you are bringing us in line with that which you have been the, the, which you have destined for us. And we see indeed the blessing of Abraham walking in our lives. Thank you, precious Lord. I bless everyone listening to the sound of my voice right now. They will surely walk in the blessings of Abraham. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Hey, walk in this light. Walk in this light and see what the Lord's going to do. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.